So what I do to find spots, good spots, new spots, is I go on Google Maps. And here you can see a map of Corson's Inlet. So I look around. This is the beach out here. Over here, it looks like a road. Bay Ave. Looks like some trees along here. Let me zoom in here. Okay, we got some trees here, and it looks like a little beach. So this is how I find good spots all around the Jersey Shore. So what I do after I find a spot that looks interesting is I look up the depths of the water and what's going on under the water, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I got my Google map here and first of all, let me tell you what this is on the right here. What that is, it's a bathymetric map which measures the depth of water in oceans, rivers, or lakes. Bathymetric maps look a lot like topographical maps which use lines to show the shape and elevation of land features. On topographical maps, the lines connect points of equal elevation. On bathymetric maps, they connect points of equal depth. So on the left, I have Corson's Inlet, the Google view, Google Maps view. And on the right, I got a picture of under under the water what the bottom of the inlet looks like. So this is how you're going to tell where the fluke are or the big fluke. So of course you'll find fluke anywhere. But if you go into this map and you want to go right to the good spots, all these lines along here show drop-offs where the, the underwater shelf drops off. Okay, so I'm looking down here. You got four feet. You got five feet here next to the thumb. Let's see if we got any deep holes here. Okay, here we got three feet. I come up here we got a lot of tight lines indicating drop-offs and the depth here is 14 feet. Now fluke or predatory fish, they hide on the bottom, around structure, they like to find edges, drop-offs, holes, so they can lay down there and watch everything that swims by and when bait fish come by, they strike them ambush them. Fluke are predatory fish and they like to ambush the bait. So that's what I that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay. Now let's pan out. Okay. Here we have the point of Corson's Inlet. And here's the same point on the left. Okay. So if I'm looking at my Google Maps over here on the left, I mean, it looks like a cool spot, but I don't know what's going on under the water. So I'm going to go over to my bathymetric map and take a close look at this. Now there's a lot of lines in here, a lot of tight lines. Got good depths. We got 19 here, 15. Looks like we got a hole over here. The circle indicates a hole. And these lines show drop offs going to that hole. So that's where you're gonna find these bigger fluke. All along here. This side, you got all kind of structure. 
You got structure over here. Let's see what else is going on around Corson's Inlet. So what I would do, I'm over here on the left now, is I would come out here. I actually got a mobile sports fishing permit. So certain times of the year I can drive down here in my truck. So I'm going to drive right down here, park, and on the right, I'm going to look for these spots where all this structure is. See how close they are and tight to the shoreline? Quiet, birds. Quiet, please, I'm doing a video. All right, you see all these tight lines on the right. I really like this spot right here. You got all these drop-offs, and then it goes to a nice hole in the middle. And this is all indicating 19, 20 feet. Them fluke, the big fluke, get the best spots down there. And they're gonna be hiding along all this structure, all these cliffs, and when the tide starts coming in, they're sitting right along these in these holes and along these edges and the bait fish start coming in and they strike them free meal and in September this place gets hopping man a lot of a lot of bait fish coming through here in the inlet now let's look up near the bridge here monk stop okay on the left we got a bridge going over Corson's Inlet. You can see that. On the right, we're going to zoom on into this and see what's going on around the bridge. Bridges are usually always good structure because the water comes around and hits all them pylons. Uh, you know, everything that's holding the bridge up, the water swirls around and starts digging out holes underneath, which creates structure. And before I go to that bridge, this looks like a good spot right over here. So there's a parking lot right over here, Corson's Inlet State Park. You park and you walk along this beach here and you got a nice hole right here at 18 feet. Got all the drop-offs near the shoreline, then it goes out to 18 feet. And that's well within casting distance. But let's go up around this bridge See all the structure around this bridge here. I'm on the left now. Got the bridge going over. On the right. Got all these tight lines. You got 13 feet. Got 18 feet. Coming back further past the bridge and the inlet. Looks like you got a lot of structure. You can come out here. I'm on the right now. You can park in this parking lot. Walk under the bridge. Low tide. I think at high tide it's pretty accessible also. You might need a pair of boots because it's a little muddy up here. But you can walk all along here. Look for these holes. This is a good spot right here. You got all these drop offs, all these tight lines, these contour lines out in the 14 feet now look at this you got 14 feet along the side but in the middle here you got three feet that's because i'm on the left now the tide comes in comes around here hits these sides and starts digging out holes creating all that structure on the right water comes around Creating all this structure, low tide, high tide, every six hours constantly eating away at that bank. But right in the middle, you got three feet. Now, if you're in a boat out here, you think, well, I can slide down the middle. I'm going to catch a nice fish. Of course, you can catch fish anywhere, but this is like a desert out here. You got three feet, no tight lines. Three feet to four feet over this whole distance. 
It's all more than enough now. If you're out here in a boat, drifting with the tide, jigging for fluke, the little guy with the kayak and a John boat over here on the side or the skiff has a better chance. The boat out in the middle here, the bigger boats, think, well, I can't be too close to the side. I'll bottom out. Um, but my wife and I, we have a John boat. And at the end of this video, I'm going to leave a uh, link so you can check out my John boat setup. If you don't have a John boat or a kayak or something like that, it's rel relatively inexpensive. And... Um, very reasonable for most people to get. Okay, let's zoom out, see what else we got around Corson's Inlet. You go, I'm on the left now, you go back further, where this wise off. Got a little crick going up this way and a crick coming back here. On the right, you see the water comes around here and hits this corner. Water goes that way, water goes this way. Let's see what's going on with the structure. Okay, you got a lot of tight lines here, a lot of drop offs. You got 11 feet there. That's a spot I would like to try. All right. Now, also, I want to show you these little cricks. Sometimes it doesn't have blue doesn't indicate blue, but on high tide, you'll have water coming in these little uh, branches of off, from off the inlet. Little bait fish will swim in there. When the tide starts going out, it starts drawing all the water out, and it draws all the bait fish out. Quiet birds, please. Birds, birds, please. Okay, so what you want to do for, you want to find a big fluke. When I started looking into this, the first weekend I went fishing after I started doing homework on this years back, I literally went from catching 17, 18 inch fluke to 25, 26 inch fluke. And I'm going to post a picture of that, a couple of my uh, nicer fluke. Okay, so um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please drop a comment below. And uh, we'll see you next time on For Reals Fishing. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.